In the last video, we saw a problem of this form, minimize C transpose x subject to ax greater than or equal to b. And its dual problem is a maximization problem. Maximize y transpose b subject to y transpose a equals c transpose y greater than or equal to zero. In some books, you'll see the dual written like this. Now remember the duality theorem for this pair of problems. If P has an optimal solution, then so does D, and the optimal values for the two problems are the same. One might wonder if it is possible to define a dual problem for things that don't look exactly like P. To answer that question, we must first understand what we are trying to achieve here. Suppose I'm looking at a problem that looks like this. Now, how would you define a dual for this problem? In essence, what we are trying to do is come up with something that gives me a lower bound on C transpose x, right? We want to lower bound the optimal value for P prime. In the previous case, the y in the dual problem basically tells us the linear combination that we need to take of the constraints in P in order to give us C transpose x greater than or equal to some value. So what we are trying to do is we want to try a linear combination of these inequalities that will give us an inequality C transpose x greater than or equal to some value. And of course we want the value, the sum value, to be as large as possible. And in fact we want the value to be the same as the optimal value of P prime. Then we will have our duality theorem. So how do we get an inequality using these constraints ax equal to b x greater than or zero? That has to form c transpose x greater than or something. Let me expand this. So the constraints are a1 transpose x equals to b1 and so on. am transpose x equal to bm. And a is my matrix with rows a1 transpose up to am transpose. So we want to take a linear combination of these constraints here. So we take this times y1 and so on, this times ym, and let me write these as x1 greater than or equal to 0, and so on, up to xn greater than or equal to 0. So we have n variables, m equalities, and these say I multiply by u, multiply by UN. Now, we want something that looks like C transpose A greater than equal to gamma, right? By taking this linear combination. Well, in order to get greater than equal to, well, it doesn't matter what the sign of these y's are, because any time we multiply equation by a constant, we still get equation, but we must take U1 up to UN to be non-negative. This is crucial, right? Because we want to maintain the same sense. In order to get greater than equal to inequality through this linear combination. And what we need is, we want C transpose to be the same as what? Y1A1 transpose, and so on. YMAM transpose, plus U1 up to UN. So we want this u1 up to un are required to be non-negative. This is equivalent to c transpose greater than or equal to y transpose a. So if we can find a y such that y transpose a is less than c transpose, then y transpose b will be a lower bound for the optimal value of P prime, right? Because uh, the inequality that we get, taking the linear combination y1 up to ym, uh, with this u, will give us an inequality that says y transpose x greater than equal to y transpose b. All right. So the dual problem should look like this. Let me call the dual problem of P prime D prime. This time, the problem we are looking at is maximize y transpose b and y transpose a less than equals to c transpose. 
In fact, we can use the duality theorem for the pair P and D to prove the same thing for P prime and D prime. That is, if P prime has an optimal solution, then so does D prime, and the optimal values are the same.